like to welcome Rachel back onto the show here. Rachel, someone I met in person five, almost six years ago now on an investor cruise. And she has been a podcast guest with me countless times over the years. Her company has been providing real estate investments in Latin America for 25 years. So they have decades of experience. What we're talking about today is the opportunity for you, an everyday investor, to invest in timberland. You actually do own the land, so it is real estate investing with trees that grow on it, and it's really affordable. And Rachel's going to tell us about those affordable price points. And what's of interest to you, the residential real estate investor, if that's the world that you come from, like I originally came from, is you don't get to participate in the growth of both the value and the volume of a residential real estate investment simultaneously like you do with investing in something like trees. And what I mean is when you buy a duplex building, well, that might appreciate in value over time, but it doesn't strangely grow in volume to a fourplex building, which in itself, it appreciates in value over time too. That just doesn't happen. But with trees, you can participate in the appreciation of both the value of the trees on a board foot level and the volume because the tree grows at the same time. So it's really just a different way to get your, your head wrapped around an investment like this, Rachel. I, I love the way that you describe that. And I haven't heard it described like that before, Keith, but I love it. Value and volume. And you are definitely getting that when you own teak trees. And I think for a long time, I know at least when I've been talking about teak and it's been about 10 years, I think about 10 years I've been working with this organization. But when I've talked about Teak to real estate investors, because like you, many of you who are listening, like you, Keith, I also am a residential real estate investor. And I know at the end of every month or the beginning of every month, I'm going to get a paycheck in from, from my renters for you know X amount of years or however long that lease is good for. Also, if you are an Airbnb renter or a vacation rental, you know that you're going to be getting a paycheck at the end of that seven night stay that that person had. Now, when you're thinking about agriculture, you have to think outside of the box. Uh, you really do because teak specifically, teak is a hardwood. It's a remarkable hardwood. As you can see behind me, there's some teak furniture, but yeah. teak it takes 25 years for teak to grow properly, 25 years. And for a lot of us, it's a little challenging to think on that 25 year scale, especially when we're used to those monthly checks or the weekly checks that are coming in from our residential property. But you have to think in terms of diversification and not just diversification of asset classes, because it's great if you have your real estate, you have your stocks and bonds, you have your crypto, you have your agriculture, but you also have to think diversification in terms of location, country, country risk. That's a real thing that we want to mitigate. So be being in another country, but also diversification in terms of length of your investment. And what's really convenient about teak in the agricultural world is that you just let it grow. You plant the trees. We have a professional management team who takes care of everything, but then you just let the trees grow out of sight, out of mind. And that's where they're really growing in the volume and value. I love Keith how you said that, but they're growing in the volume and value at that point because that's what they do best. Trees are literally growing in value every year that they're growing. They get larger larger in size, which means there's more board feet at the end of the day to be selling at that 25th year. So it is a little bit different of a real estate ownership investment, but it is something I think everybody should have in their portfolio. It's become really popular. And of course, dozens of our followers have already invested in the teak trees there. You mentioned on how it has a stabilizing effect on a portfolio. It is uncorrelated with almost anything else that one can think of. When you think about all the crazy things that have happened in the world and the economy, over the past couple years, whether it's been a global health crisis or oil prices collapsing and rebounding again. Through all that, the trees just quietly show up. They know what to do every day. They keep growing through eviction moratoria and everything else. So it really has this stabilizing effect on a portfolio. A lot of people, though, they might not be too aware of teak trees, T-E-A-K. You've got some great teak furniture right behind you there. That's really popular. Now, I grew up in upstate Pennsylvania, not too far from where you were raised in uh, nearby New York State there, Rachel. And I did forestry for a summer and we would often go out and do forestry for trees like maple and black cherry and birch and things like that. But there are unique properties about teak that's really given it enduring value over time, which is really important when we talk about a longer term investment horizon like we're talking about here. 
teak is naturally water resistant. It's very strong and durable. With changes in humidity, it's not prone to expansion or contraction like a lot of other woods are. So that's why it's been really valuable in building ships and in building furniture, like the furniture that's right over your shoulder there. The oils in teak are unique and they really make it weather resistant and fire resistant, basically with little or no care when it's left outside. It, it's true. And I think that's really what makes it such a remarkable hardwood. And one of the big reasons why it's been around for centuries, you know, this isn't just something that we discovered or landed upon or a synthetic and we created in a lab. It's a naturally growing hardwood and it's been around for centuries. It was actually used in the Titanic for a lot yeah. of the furniture that was there on board. And it's quite neat because I, I have a picture of one of the Titanic chase chairs that was made out of teak that was submerged originally, but it was pulled out, restored, and it's in a museum now, but it goes to show the longevity and the durability. There are a lot of boat companies. Chris Craft Boats is one of the high-end boat companies. They use teak in the construction of their boats because of the durability factor. And you mentioned something, Keith, that I do want to highlight too, is the fact that teak is resistant to fire after age three. After age three of a plant being planted, after the third year, it becomes resistant to, to fire, rot, termites, bugs, all of that, which you really do have to consider when you're looking at an agricultural investment. You know, I think a lot of times we just see what the opportunity is. We see what the potential or return on investment is and we forget all about the risks. But for a lot of agricultural products, you do have to think about fire, rot, fungus, but teak is just really an incredible hardwood where it is resistant to that. So that is a, a great point that I'm, I'm glad you mentioned there. You brought to my attention a few years ago that Wayfair regularly sells teak furnishings of all different kinds. If you want to learn more about this, Rachel put together a great report for you that shows the pro forma returns and the time horizons and beautiful photographs and maps and the geography and everything else of teak. You can get a hold of that at GetRichEducation.com slash teak. That's GetRichEducation.com slash T-E-A-K. Yes, you're not on TikTok. You're listening to Teak Talk with Keith and Rachel here and TikTok might make you laugh but Teak might make you money and like I've said it's uncorrelated with most anything else that you can think of but Rachel you bring up some of the risks some of the downside risks and a lot of times Americans might be investing for the very first time outside their nation's borders so are there any maybe gotchas or ahas that new investors in the past didn't know about and they wish they would have known about sooner? Sure. And I'll mention one specifically about Teague and then a couple general ones. One for Teague I want to mention, because again, we talk about risks and it's always good to know is that although Teague is a 25 year harvest cycle, it's not always guaranteed that Teague will be harvested at that 25th year, maybe the 26th year, maybe the 27th year. It just determines what that marketplace looks like at the time. So I just want to make that clear. Um, I can talk to anybody about that a little bit more specifically if they're interested in that. But when it comes to a general overseas knowledge, when you're buying property in another country, in Panama specifically, so we're in Panama and Nicaragua. Panama is a country where it takes a long time to get title to your property. 18 to 24 months is about regular. Uh, and Nicaragua is actually quicker. Nicaragua, Nicaragua is about three to six months. But I don't want that to scare you away. I just want you to go in with that expectation, understanding that it will take a little bit more time to get your title. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a bureaucratic process. And it's just how how long things take to get the title process. But your purchase agreements, your counter signed purchase agreements between you and the buyer or you and the seller rather acts as your legal deed until you get that physical piece of paper from the lands department. So I do want to mention that to you. And then I always encourage people to go down and, and check out the opportunities. If you're not able to do so that at least request testimonials and videos and photos. But it's a really it's a really neat world down here. I live in Belize full time. I'm a resident of Panama, lived in Nicaragua. Um, but I just see so many opportunities here in the region for people to get involved uh, overseas. And Latin America really is a, a great place for people to start. But, uh, you know, do your due diligence, of course, ask the right questions. You may not know what sort of questions to ask. So I'm happy to give you that. We have a big Q&A of what first time buyers ask. I'm happy to send that over to you. So you just take a look at that. But I would say titling is one of the big ones that I would recommend you set expectations about. Yes, you do provide tours there. I know a number of investors and prospective investors have taken you up on the tours there in Panama and Nicaragua. So let's talk about the costs and returns and the upside of this. There's certainly different time horizons depending on what age of teak you buy and how long you want to wait. Tell us about the cost and the returns one can expect. 
Sure. So being that it is a 25 year harvest cycle, we have been at this actually since about 1999. So 22, 23 years is our oldest farm at this point. It's a 25 year harvest cycle. So we're just a couple of years away from that final harvest. That plantation is all sold out at this point, but we do have newborn teak parcels in Panama, Nicaragua, starting at about $7,000 plus the titling fees. We have one year old teak parcels in Nicaragua that start about 7,500 US plus titling fees. And then we have a teenage teak farm in Panama. So I uh, just turned 16. And with that teak farm there, it's only nine years away until harvest. So you can see that there is a lot more volume there. There's more value to the trees. So it is going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, those started at about $19,000. But of course, I recommend you to reach out and let us know that you you have interest so we can let you know what the latest availability is. You may, people listen to these podcasts and to these YouTubes like two, three years down the line. So I will tell you that the teak probably won't be successful. 16 anymore at that point, and there'll probably be a new price tag, but just reach out to us so we can get that latest information over to you. But it's really quite affordable opportunity starting at about $7,000 projected return on an investment over that 25 year period. Net number is about 94,000. Um, over the 25 year period too, I do want to mention that the final harvest is at age 25, but there's what we call thinnings that happens at age 12, 18, and 20. And that's when we remove the trees that aren't growing as well as the others to make room for the trees that are growing well so that they can grow in size, grow in value. And those would be the ones eventually that are harvested at the 25th year. So you do receive some return on investment at age 12, 18, 20, but a majority of that really happens at age 25. Okay, so certainly not monthly or even annual cash flow, but one doesn't need to wait the entire 25 years. And then the prices that you're talking about, there is financing, correct? And these are quarter acre parcel prices. Is that right? Exactly. Quarter acre parcel prices. And yes, we do have financing options. I'd say more, it's more of a payment schedule really than anything because there's okay. no interest on it. But for folks who are getting two parcels or more, we do have an option where you can put $5,000 down and then pay off that balance in six months and in, in six monthly equal installments at 0% interest. Uh, we've also started to accept cryptocurrency. Uh, we did about three, four years ago, started to accept crypto. So something that we're pretty well versed in at this point, we also accept gold and silver, which we have had people send over over their little bars or their coins and <laughs> that towards their purchase. Trading hard assets for hard assets. Little old school bartering there. Yeah, I've got it like that. And I am glad that you mentioned, yeah, it is important that you, the real estate investor, own the land yourself. But yeah, I ran into this myself when I first bought Panama property. I had to wait about two years to get the deeds, the titles to my property. So as long as you know that's coming, it's not so bad. I know there are some other options. For example, if one invests there in Teak in either Panama or Nicaragua, there could be a second residency option and some more. Are there any last things that we should know about this, Rachel? You know, I would say, especially the time that we're talking about this, Keith, it's the end of October. Um, and I want to say that around this time of year is actually when we start to hear from a lot of people who are thinking about ownership of Teak and gifting it, actually gifting it ah. to a loved one, a friend, family member, or whomever. And you're able to do that, especially with the smaller parcels, uh, you know, at $7,000 mark, you can gift it to them without having any tax obligations in the States. And so it makes for a nice gift if you're trying to think about that generational wealth concept. And generational wealth is something that I think we sometimes put in the back of our minds because it's easier for us to think about cash flow. But generational wealth, if, if you want to be able to pass your wealth on to a loved one, to your, your kids, your grandkids, to a niece, nephew, whomever, having an opportunity like this where you can own the teak, you own the land, and then just have it continue on for generations. All the land is certified reforested, which means we commit to replanting. So you own, you own the land, and then every 25 years, we just replant and do it again, replant and do it again and, and pass it around for generations. It's really a, a mindset that the ultra wealthy tend to have, the, the, the top 1%. Uh, there are a lot of folks out there who have millions upon it, millions acres of farmland, uh, specifically for this reason, to keep that wealth in the family. And it's just one avenue for that, right? I think if you have one parcel, $7,000, it's a great way to diversify. But look at your portfolio and see what you're able to do. But I do want to mention one more thing is if you do hear this, folks, do feel free to reach out to us. Uh, let us know that you heard about us through the YouTube Keith's YouTube channel and we'll give you a special gift. Just reach out to us and we'll get that special gift over to you. But we do need to know that you came from this specific recording. 
That's so cool. And I know what the gift is, but I won't spill the beans on what that was. But I, I, I think you're really going to really gonna like it. And Rachel, I'm so glad that we met years ago. Your company has been reliably offering these offshore investments for 25 years, about 22 years with the Teak program specifically now. If you want to learn more and get be able to get a hold of Rachel's team and learn about the investment and see some cool landscapes and pro formas so that you know what returns you can expect, you can do that at GetRichEducation.com slash teak. That's getrichteducation.com slash T-E-A-K. Rachel, this just really satisfies my desire to talk about geography and things like that. So I just really love chats like this. Thanks so much for coming on the show with me. Thank you, Keith. It was a pleasure. And yes, I am glad that we met on that cruise a few years ago. I can't believe it's almost been six years. Time certainly does fly. But thank you for everything that you're doing. You uh, have a wonderful show here and you're doing a great job at educating your listeners about how to get rich. So thank you for everything. Thanks for being a great contributor for such a long time. Bye, Rachel.